Be very much looking forward to this conversation. Uh, so great to be here. Thanks for having me. So tell us a little bit about your background. What got you into doing the work you're doing today? Well, uh, growing up, I was one of those lost kids that didn't know what they wanted to do. Uh, Grown-ups tell you to get good grades, find that job, and I never really found my, my uh, way there. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I'm a big guy, so luckily I could, uh, I could foul well enough to make a basketball team. <laughs> you, how tall are you? I'm about 6'8". Yeah, wow, uh, yeah, so you walk in and it's like you look up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't tell people how much I weigh anymore. Yeah. <laughs> So, but that was about 100 pounds ago. Wow. So, but it was uh, it was interesting because when all that was finished and done, I really didn't know what I wanted to do. And I found myself in sales. I got really good at sales and business. And I, you know, learned how to how to pitch things, so to speak. And I ran into a company that was selling a software mm -hmm. on trading. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, the internet had just come about, and I got really interested in that. And as a result. I started using it, started learning about it, and moved away uh, from there into being an educator and an investor. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, things just worked out and, and uh, landed in a really nice place. So, when you say an educator and an investor, uh, obviously you do your own investing, but yeah. you also are educating other people on how to do it. Uh, so, the education part came, um, A, because it's something I very much enjoy, and as I got to know more and more teachers and mentors, they were kind enough to ask me to, to join some of the things they were doing. I've been a rich dad advisor for Robert and Kim Kiyosaki for oh, 10, 12 years now. And that's just been a wonderful adventure, learning from them and then passing on the, the things I've learned from my mentors mm -hmm. and also uh, experience, both good and bad. How important is a mentor in, in the process of becoming a good investor? I, I think it's everything. If you look at the greatest investor in the world, Warren Buffett, you look behind him and Benjamin Graham is right there. Um, Robert had a rich dad. Mm -hmm. Almost every great investor I can think of had someone that taught them how this worked. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think there's any guarantees when you invest, but having a great mentor uh, to talk to, to question, to guide you, um, that's really what the book Rich Dad Poor Dad was all about, it was a, a book about having a rich dad, a mentor. And I guess uh, on the flip side, uh, having the wrong guidance, or uh, let's call them the, the anti-mentor. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, somebody's mentoring you but giving you bad advice that can also send you in the wrong direction. Sometimes that's trial and error. You yeah. know, you take a punch and say, well, I shouldn't listen to, to this guy. But mm. that's a huge point you make, though, mm. about mentorship. You know, when, as a rich dad advisor, I get asked a lot about Robert and Kim and, and you know, Rich Dad, Poor Dad and that whole series of books. And I remember I ran into it like anybody else. Uh, a friend of mine gave it to me in the 90s and I read it. And we thought it was about buying assets. Mm -hmm. You know, we said, well, we'll stop buying liabilities and we'll go buy assets. And we set out to buy real estate. My wife and I, we bought zero real estate. I mean, we, you know, once we got into the details of it, we were unsure and the fog of concern came in. Mm -hmm. And I remember she said, let's reread this book mm -hmm. and see what we missed. So we sat down to read it and she looked at the cover and said, I got it. I said, what do you mean I got it? She said, hey, we've both got poor dads. We're halfway there. All we need is the rich dad. And when we made that transition from searching for deals mm -hmm. to searching for people that could help us, that made a huge difference. So I, I can't say enough about the importance of, of working as a team and finding the right teachers. That's actually pretty fascinating, uh, you know, that you had that realization because a lot of times people think it's, you know, maybe just add water. Okay, here's the advice. This, you do this, you do this, you do this. And I think having a process, uh, you know, the, a template to work from is a good thing. But uh, you stopped and said, I gotta go find a mentor. So how do you go and find a good mentor? I think uh, when you look at advisors and mentors, they're very similar. Mm -hmm. You know, advisors are like accounts and attorneys. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think you talk to the people who do what you'd like to do mm -hmm. and then ask them you know, who their advisors or mentors were. Mm -hmm. That's, I think, the most surefire way through a, a network or someone that you know and trust when they recommend someone, that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. If someone successful says, you know, Warren Buffett says, yeah, I read Benjamin Graham's book. He was my great mentor. That's a clue. Yeah. That's a clue for sure. That's great. So what's your philosophy on investing? How do, how do you like approach it from maybe the, the high level saying, this is the way I see things? Sure. Investing is about uh, investing 
wisely in, in making transactions. And this is not something that, that we have in school. You know, we have economics and finance, but investing is different. And when, uh, when Robert asked me to write my book in his series, it forced me to answer that question. You know, what, what is investing? And I've come to believe that there's four things uh, that make up the makeup investing, or at least a wise investor. Mm -hmm. The first two have to do with gathering information. Um, for jargon and, and fancy terms, we call this understanding things fundamentally, mm -hmm. or what you call a fundamental analysis. Mm -hmm. So the first lessons of investing, I would say, is the ability to look at a deal mm -hmm. and understand its numbers. You know, mm -hmm. Can I look at uh, a church and is it doing well? Can I look at a nonprofit, a government, a stock or a real estate deal? When I look at its income and its, its expenses, its assets, its liabilities, when I look at those numbers, do I understand them well enough to say, well, at least it's you know, surviving now, at least mm -hmm. it's headed in the right direction. So that'd be the first one. Mm -hmm. The second thing I would say of the four is also information gathering. We have to be aware of trends. Mm -hmm. uh, trending is a huge thing in business. We don't want to react too much to every little blip, that, that'd be silly. Mm -hmm. But to understand the general idea of supply and demand and where things are headed uh, is a huge advantage. So with those two things, we have information. Mm -hmm. The third thing is critical is that's where we begin to take some action in how we position ourselves. Mm -hmm. For example, uh, not much I can do about a, a report that comes out on a, on a particular stock, the, the numbers are what they are. But I can choose how I position myself, mm -hmm. whether I'm long or short or want to cash flow or how I want to place my money in the, in the way of success, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And then the fourth thing is, is the one that I think is the most important thing to learn in investing, and that's the idea of managing risk. Mm -hmm. um, those numbers, uh, people think it's about predicting the future, and I tend to think less so. I, right. I think trends are important. but. Dealing with sudden change. When you can do that, mm -hmm. uh, then you can invest with confidence, knowing you have a plan B. That's the you know we spoke last time about 401ks, mm -hmm. and that that lack of a plan B bothers me the most. Is is you know if you have a systemic issue, what are you going to do? So having a plan B and knowing how to adjust. So those are the four: looking at numbers, fundamentals, um, looking at trends. Mm -hmm. Some people call it technicals. Uh, positioning yourself for cash flow and then finally risk management. And in a nutshell, those are the four things I think about when I'm gonna make an investment decision. Can you give me an example of uh, what you mean by a plan B? Absolutely, mm -hmm. uh, insurance is a good plan B. Mm -hmm. In the stock market, we call that a hedge. Mm -hmm. And the idea is if we, you know, you, you would never, never put money in a home mm -hmm. without insurance because it could burn down. Now you and I, uh, we don't think our house is going to burn down today. We don't think it's likely. We're not predicting mm -hmm. that it would burn down. Right. And yet if it did, uh, no one would claim that we're geniuses because we bought insurance. Well, a more specific example that I often cite is Mark Cuban. Mm -hmm. And I don't remember if we talked about this before, but even so, it, it bears repeating, mm -hmm. is Mark Cuban had a company called Broadcast.com. Mm -hmm you know, broadcast baseball games all over the world. The internet was brand new and sexy. Mm -hmm. And a company, search engine Yahoo, came to him mm -hmm. and said, we'll give you, you know, $6 billion of Yahoo stock for this company. And he said, yes. <laughs> and, uh, and that was around always oh, probably $100 a share. Mm -hmm. Well, within a very short amount of time, it's worth $5. Mm -hmm. And yet Cuban still owns the Mavericks and is rich. And, and he was on 60 Minutes with Steve Croft. Mm -hmm. And Croft says, how'd you do it? You know, I mean, you, you trade all your money for this stock and it goes to zero. How come you're still a billionaire? And he said, well, I was covered. I was hedged. In other words, he had purchased some contracts uh, that were very much like insurance contracts that allowed him to sell at a high price, mm -hmm. even though it, it came down low. Mm -hmm. And Steve Croft says, well, he was a genius. I says, well, not really, because if he thought it was going to go down, he would have sold for cash mm -hmm. instead of stock. The only reason you sell for stocks is if you thought it was going up. Mm -hmm. But the fact he had insurance made him look smart than the average person. But in reality, he's no smarter than you and I insuring a home or a car. So there's lots of different plan Bs. There's insurance, there's exits. Um, there's position sizes, mm -hmm. a lot of different ways to, to manage risk. 
Thanks so much for being here and watching that video. And can I ask you to please subscribe to our channel so you can find out when we're posting new content. You'll be alerted right away when we do to share this with people you think might benefit from the information. And certainly it helps us if you like the video. So if you like what you just saw, go ahead and hit that like button. And again, thank you so much for being here with me right now.